<coughs> okay, so um, I'm making a short video, but maybe like has happened a couple of times over the last month where I made one or two videos that were quite long but um, I had to delete them. I made a short video yesterday but I had to delete that too because um, I was filming the noise coming from the house opposite and the place next to that. Like there were two places where work was being done. And, um, but I had to delete it because unfortunately, unfortunately I was tempted to film a couple of videos as well, like I didn't intend to. And I went over to the TV like I'm doing now and saw a couple of music videos and ended up filming far too much of them to where copyright come into play, unfortunately. So I wasn't allowed to put those videos out. And I keep getting tempted that way. Like I, that's why I keep saying copyright whenever I show I can only show a very small amount of anything that's on the YouTube or the TV or whatever um, you know it depends on the copyright like see I got tricked there because I was able to show a reasonable amount of that old movie that was live on the TV but on the YouTube um, it may be a different thing so it doesn't matter but um I'm just going to say that to myself before I start, otherwise I'll be wasting a lot of time and energy filming stuff. But either way, there has been noise going outside most of today, but we're now heading towards the close of the day. In fact, um, at a legal level, I was told about a year or two ago that you can't make mechanical noise, do work, after 3.30 in the afternoon. And they start at about 7, 7.30 and go through to 3.30. And I'm just going to show you that my clock is now the right time finally again. It was four hours out the other day. Um, but as you can see it says 3. Is it coming out? It says 3.32. And I'm going to talk very loud if I can because I did notice that unfortunately when I even filmed the video yesterday... I, I was actually pleased with it in the sense, but I had to delete it because all the, I showed a couple of music videos and a bit of a movie, but also I was speaking very loud and very clear and never went in or out. Um, and I was kind of surprised at that. Maybe that's why they tempted me to uh, break the copyright rule because I was sounding confident and talking really clear and very loud actually I was very loud see I got the mobile only a few inches from my face right now but I'm just going to see they should be gone now you see because it's 3.30 but also they have stopped the noise that's why I've got that music playing there that was now see there they are opposite so as you can see they're going now I think or are they I, I don't want to go out here too much one stop mate just going over as soon as I come out. But see, there's someone in that van there. That says one stop maintenance. That's a different van from those, I think, or is it? I don't know, but they're basically pulling that house completely inside out over there. I'm um, going to stand back away from them because... I must stand back because... I must stand back. Oh, they're going now. That's good. See, so it is 3.30 and they should be gone. There's a plane over there too. Look. A plane over there, but that won't come out. But they're going now. They're going. As, that's good, actually. Um, that they're going. At least I hope they are. But all I'm going to... And see, they're in that place next to it as well. See, they're pulling out. See, that place is a really old place. And I was told, uh, you know, by... Um, 
local one round here when I it's even on a video a past video I might say it's actually there but it won't come out because if I'm standing up here and someone starts to engage me in a conversation which they do like to do um, goodbye till tomorrow I guess but I'm making fun of that but there's no laughing matter because um, the reason I say that so they're actually demolishing the whole inside of that place and yet you can actually see right through it won't come out in the motor but you can actually see right through to the lane at the back so this shows you that they're totally demolishing the inside of that place after I believe they paid a fortune for it and it was a very old world place and I was told by uh, a neighbour around here not going to make comments about, um, you know, why they, um, you know, about the, about the denominations of people or whatever. We've already established that. Please silent trying to sidetrack my conversation. It won't come out in the mobile, but police siren but it is sidetracking my mind see all these things distract your mind and then you but see they're doing work in that place opposite there as well so so it's both places right opposite you know I'm um, doing apparent work but you know like that place I was told was really old and antique and the lady that before she sold it I was told the lady before she's told it yeah, slow up in front, just so obvious, jeez. I feel, you know, like I'm so used to being intimidated that I'm, <coughs> that I'm less intimidated than what I should be knowing the true reality of this um, area. It's strange, but it's like, I suppose it would be like if you were living in a particular part of the world where there was always, um, you know, something going on that was negative. Um, you would just think that was almost normal and that is not good. See, that fella's just going to lurk around in the front there, but um, Matrix Patroller. But um, the only reason I say that is because real in the past you didn't get many people coming up from the end of the street. You know, like, um, here comes another truck pulling in. What is this truck pulling in when all the work is finished? Now, this is, they're just, just um, trying to make me look an idiot on the video, to be honest, because I, I look foolish because, you see, they appear to be people doing legitimate work, and they are doing legitimate work. It's just that. It's just that they're accomplishing three tasks at the one time. They're doing that work in the place. But they are part of this matrix artificial um, control system. You know, the noise has stopped there now, but it was really loud a few hours ago. And it the only, and it didn't bother me, and I was actually upstairs in bed because I, I was on the night shift, and so, see, car pulling in right opposite the usual neighbours that always nearly pull in whenever I come out, you know. Oh, wait, the next bloody door's bloody right next to me, that which... Oh, the one bloody next door. Sorry about that. I didn't know that she was sitting there listening to me behind that screen. Like they've got like a, a, a thing up so they want privacy, but she's sitting there listening to me. I had no idea. I try to keep away from negative frequencies and energies if I can because, um, you know, you can feel the negative frequency and vibration because a lot of these people um, are infiltrated by the negative technology you know and um you know like she's just literally sitting there through the thing and i didn't even aware of it because it's it's all got a vine there oh, i can't believe that but um you know i do try to keep away from these negative people 
I really do, because they um, are controlled by the Matrix. They are Matrix operatives, whether they know it or not. They know it in the sense that they know that they are part of a system or a community or a denomination of people, I would imagine. But whether they um, are aware that they are controlled in a world world matrix is another thing. I do not know that. But either way, um, you know, I oh, see I got upset then, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know why, but I just felt as though incredible negative um, energy was around me. You know where you feel terribly uncomfortable? It wasn't like the technology that the same entities can, through just basic technology, send towards you. That is a different thing. One is kind of more spiritual or more... Um, it's what you feel because as a human being... You should, if you are not too, um, if you're not too infiltrated by the matrix. In other words, like um, if you were in a normal world where you were at, at reasonable frequency and vibration, which most like myself are not, then you um, would be very aware of whose space or whose space you should be in, you would, you would, you know, you would be able to sense the danger of negative frequencies and vibrations very clearly. Now that sidetracked me, you see, there from talking about the houses being done. But see, they're sitting out there with all that noise. I know the noise has stopped, but the noise was going for hours and hours because I was actually up in bed and I had stuff stuck in my ears. So I could still hear it when it must have been incredibly loud to hear it when you've got stuff in your ears and you're upset. and that's across the other side of the road see but the reason I got annoyed by it was because I've got the sick cat he's outside at the moment and he was sitting like here and so he cops all that noise so that they send all these really loud noises not just to disturb you if you so that you can't just sit inside your own house or even do anything inside your own house without being mentally disturbed by these um, mechanical, very destructive negative frequencies or vibrations, which is essentially sound or noise. It's like, um, you know, and this is a situation that's been going on for years. I've mentioned this over and over again. I was hoping, see yesterday I filmed it when it was really loud because I was up earlier and they got me when I was up. So today I stayed up more in the night because they can't legally put incredibly loud noises of a the night. They have other things set up to um, knowing your behaviour and your movements. They set up other things of a night time. But also they probably prefer you to be um, more active of a night because there's less people around. That could be part of their game too. But either way, they do it of a night too, like there's... There's even road work, excessive amount of road work of a night time, which is not plausible in any reality, certainly not in the past, you know. But um, but like I say, with that place opposite, um, that place, actually I was told, and it, like I say, it was actually on a video, I was told um, that they renovated that place opposite completely. The lady that lived there, and I never spoke to her once. She lived opposite for years and I never spoke to her once. You know, like for almost um, 25, 26 years or whatever because they've only, they only moved out and sold that. the lady that lived there all on her own in that great big place. I never spoke to her. I used to see her very occasionally. Now, it's interesting that she moved out and I never, ever spoke to her. Maybe I should have... Um, spoke to her on occasion but see that's how they play the matrix because most of the people that I speak to on this street if I have spoken to anyone that um, is friendly towards me they're always moved out straight away I've mentioned the incidences of where just two doors down I was 
the lady there was very friendly to me. I spoke to her a couple of times and felt um, that she was a real person. This was before the Matrix, just before the Matrix came down. But she was she cleared out after moving there with her husband and um, a dog. And she moved out a few weeks later. And she told me because people started ripping up her plants. Now, oh, now that I mention it, oh, I suppose I forgot to mention this, but I should have. But I don't want to go out here. I'm not going to say anything because there's someone lurking next door behind the thing. So I don't want to have anything. But I'm just going to show you because I filmed it yesterday, but I had to delete that video. Speaking of plants, they pulled up this lady's plants a few years ago because she was friendly to me. Same when I was friendly to the one next door before the one next door moved in. You know, I was sceptical of her for a long time, but one day when I actually spoke to her, she appeared to be, and and immediately she moved out because the neighbours complained about her or something. And the same thing happened two doors down where they ripped up all this person's plants, all beautiful plants, so, you know, that they took the hint. They were like, um, oh, bad things are happening in the house where I'm living. And she told me this. She said, so we're just clearing out. We just moved to another place in the next suburb. And that was to keep them away from me because they don't want real people talking to me. The same reason they don't want the boarding place where there could be a possible, you know, at least, you know, nearly 20 people coming new. It was supposed to be 30. You know, and amongst those, there's bound to be some that are real people, maybe even more than some, you know, and that's why that has now been stopped. It hasn't, no construction has went on, despite the fact that they've levelled the ground and pulled the place down. No construction has gone on for six months now just because of two people. Now, if that was a real reality, two people that are not even, you know, that are not even owning their own place and that are just in government-controlled housing department would not be valid for their reasons for not continuing that destruction. That's all I could really say. But they just, um, all I'm saying is that they will start that construction when they think the time is right. It's all about keeping my frequency and vibration down around here. That's what I think and any real people, you know. It's all about they know the game because they know it is really a spiritual reality. I'm just going to show what they did talking about plants. They've ripped, they've, uh, someone has ripped all my plants out again in the front here. Not that they were plants, they were only mainly weeds, but there was two trees that I liked. I actually filmed them and thought they were nice only a day or two. Now, they've all been got yesterday. No, it was the day before when I come back after getting the coffee. I was only down the road for an hour or two. When I come back, everything was gone. So, look, just dirt. Just dirt. Just dirt. <coughs> <coughs> just dirt. <coughs> just dirt and rubbish, you know. Literally a lot of dirt and rubbish, to be honest. But, at any rate... Um, But dirt, but dirt and rubbish, you know, like the all gone. That was a tree there. But they're still here. I don't know what they're doing over here. Um, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, that one next door is just gone in. But, um, you know, because they're all controlled, you see. They don't know what they're doing, most of them. They're just all controlled. They're just all, oh, controlled. And uh, if that's... But um, they should be finished by now. It's after 3.30, you know. Um, there's a little pigeon up there in the thing. Perhaps I should go and feel. But, but essentially that place was like, um, like I said, they, uh, I was told that the lady that owned it before she sold it spent, oh, I think it was some astronomical amount of money to renovate the, to renovate the inside modernly. But you see, these people, they don't really like the old stuff or the antique. See, that whole place is going to be ripped out. Although it looks old on the outside, see, it's a facade. It's like this matrix. It's a facade. There's people in the place over there too doing work there, see, too. 
No, but um, that's like a facade of this matrix, you see, that um, that on the outside that looks like a big old-fashioned place, but now they're ripping the entire inside out and making it all technological and new and up-to-date, you know, and that is essentially what this reality is. It's a fake reality where everything looks real and natural, but it's really all tech technological. Actually, they, they're illegal now because it's after 3.30. It's now nearly 4 o'clock, so actually um, they're illegal making that noise, even though it's not as loud as what it was before. But... <coughs> But at any rate, you know, that's, um, that's the thing, you know. And um, I must put that box there, but I might um, speak a bit later. Oh, it's a plane. Yeah. But, um, you know... Is they're noisy even when they do just basic things like putting yes maybe I could have that pot see they're probably see they're probably going to make a flash garden in the place of that but look at what's mine mine's just all been demolished that tree's gone and all this all gone and but I wouldn't mind that but you see that is like a tree that look at that see that's not like just see that is a tree but it's all been completely um stuff out here because I'm <coughs> oh, where's my bin? I better bring my bin. But anyway, um not sure what I'm making the point here. Um but they've stopped the noise, so <coughs> they've stopped the noise more or less, but it was very noisy and it's like day in, day out. But see the did I make any point there? I don't think so and I I'm so nervous, I'm sorry, I don't even... But I've turned this cat music on for the cat because it's soothing cat music because I thought the noise, that's right, but the cat's gone outside. But actually, I find it rather soothing myself. I'm actually surprised. So it's like just... But I might, while I'm here... See, it's... it's it's after the legal time for them to be still working over there, but um, see, they, they make their own rules. Admittedly, they won't do it once it gets dark, but um, you know, but see, they're just sort of hoping that I'll go over and say complain or mention that because they probably know they know, well, of course, they know I know, of course, they read your mind. But what I'm trying to say is, um, you know, obviously, if it's an hour more and it's not too bad like now it's not anywhere near as bad as what it was um for you know a few hours i'm not gonna do that and i generally don't like to um confront um those that are right next to me even though i know i filmed the street and talk about the the area and the matrix and and the whole of sydney and and it's 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 a world matrix so it's only that you know, it centres around human beings wherever they are, in individual areas, in individual suburbs, in individual cities. Um, you know, I would imagine. This is what I have been um, told and that makes sense. But, of course, I don't know um, most people. And in recent times, particularly over the last two years, I've become very confused as to as to you know I mean like I would have assumed that 
you're either consciously part of the matrix or you're not. In recent years, I have been, when I say recent years, quite recent years, I have, well, it's less than that, but in very recent almost months, I've actually, um, you know, I've had no doubt that um, that people work against me, you know. But I've had to ask, is are they part of the matrix patrol control system or are they just, or are some of them just controlled individually? For whatever reason, because that has been how my mind has experienced some people, you see. Either way, they are, as I've said many times in the past, you, you're still working either directly or indirectly for the Matrix God and its artificial control Matrix world. Okay, so I'm actually a nervous wreck now, even low. And that's mainly because um, I don't like to be too close to um, negative energies, particularly when they're very close to me, if you follow my gist. But it's unavoidable because I just, you know, I'm not always alert enough. See, I've got a bit of stuff stuck in my ears, but it's not pushed right in so I can hear everything. But at the same time, it's kind of muffling. But I thought that was better because yesterday when I put stuff in my ears, but when I checked the video, the sound come out really loud and really good because it was loud, you see, because it has to be very loud, um, negative technical um, machines going in order for the mobile to pick it up if it's across the road or if it's not right next to me, you know, but it's really loud. It comes right into the house. But, um, but this is um, just normal. I don't know why I'm, I'm making such a point about it, but that's because I'm nervous. I got very nervous now making this video. Normally I don't get too nervous. I usually only get nervous after I've done it, you know. But for some reason today I got nervous during it. That cat's got funny eyes, hasn't he? I better turn this off because maybe you can get copyright for playing the relaxing cat music. I'm not sure. I don't know about that because, you know, because you can only play bits of things, you see. I do hope that you can. Um, um, okay. Um, oh, I'm not going to show all the videos and stuff that I've been watching. But I think that I'm just going to say that, see, whatever comes up, see, I've got the TV on here now, right? Um... I'm going to go on to the, where it says music, but, <coughs> oh, I don't know, um, <coughs> oh, dear, mm. sometimes I force it out, but also I was, um, got very, um, stressed out there, actually, to be honest, I have to say, I got very, very stressed, I actually did. Normally I don't because I concentrate totally on the video, even though I know that, that I just kind of try to be indifferent to the Matrix operatives. Um, it's essentially this, I realise this now, even like the bus depot is like, a, obviously it's a bus depot base, but that is really like a front, you could say. Is that the word? A front for the reality that it is... Um, a different kind of base than just a bus depot base because all those buses are like um, like the garbage trucks and all the semi-trailers and um, all the different fast vehicles that you see around that you never saw down Norton Street which 
you know, ever in the past, but certainly you saw them on Parramatta Road, but not in the vast numbers that you see now. This is not something I can prove. And it's interesting too, and I'm getting all over the place. I'm so sorry that I'm all over the place, but see, three things are coming to me at once and I can only say one. I don't know why, but, you know, you get you get so stressed that all the ideas and the things that are bothering you are coming at you and that's why it's, it's probably better if, you know, if I don't worry about showing the actual reality. Or in other words, the actual, like, physical reality around that it is, um, you know, a controlled patrol system through sight and sound because it's so hard to do that. It's probably better if I just... Um, you know, like I always intended originally, just sit down and talk about, uh, you know, a favourite movie or, or use a piece of music, and it usually makes a better video. But, um, you know, but hey, I don't know. Uh, where was I? See, I've lost my train of thought again now. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, where was I? The trucks. Yeah, see, all those vehicles the garbage trucks, the excessive number of garbage trucks, the even though it's a bus depot, the amount of buses that come and go in that bus depot just the minute you come outside and on the street all the time does not allow for a normal bus service because the bus depot is a matrix base. This whole of Leichhardt is a matrix base a matrix control system base. It's a human control system base where they have basically all, you know, set up a total system around the human beings that are in a particular area. <coughs> So what appears to be normal vehicles, even though they're in excessive numbers, and that you can't really prove either, um, they, are, they appear to be like the construction that goes on everywhere. It appears to be legitimate, but there is, it's so excessive, the construction that has been going on for the last couple of years, that no normal person wouldn't notice it and say, hey, what is going on in this area? What is going on in the suburb? What is going on in this inner west? Because it's more than one suburb. It's, the, it's all the adjoining suburbs, which is why they combined it, because then they can bring all the forces in from all the adjoining suburbs. That was how they changed it, which everyone we were all told that the council is now not Leichhardt it's not local it's now the inner west which means it's like about six or seven suburbs see um but I don't know what that proves to anyone but um but either way um yeah the, all those vehicles are essentially um like I've said this before like the garbage trucks always give me the impression as though they're like an army tank and essentially, if you look at it in a spiritual way, that's exactly what it is. You know, they're like patrolling and trying to control and even um, suppress and in a way, you know, destroy real life in a way that no one can see it. It's like everything that's going on. That's really all I can say, but... <coughs> <coughs> but um, I think I need a drink. Just hold on for a second. Um, just hold on. I'm going to get a drink. <coughs> I've got it dark in here because I don't want to show how untidy and dirty the kitchen is. Um, uh you know, because, um, because the, you know, the old saying, an untidy house donates an untidy mind. Well, I might be talking big on the video, but clearly I have got an untidy mind. And I have. I'm totally, I'm all over the place. But I'm still a 
problem for this matrix control system, even in my dilapidated, confused, completely suppressed mental state. Because most uh, artificial um, android beings that are totally under the control of the matrix, working for the matrix, working for this control patrol system, because they are in collaboration with one another against real life, which real life is the centre and the creation of everything, you see. That is just so. But we don't know that and we don't have control over our mind and our emotions and our feelings to where we can consciously um, bring... bring a beneficial reality around us into existence almost, see, because human thought creates reality. We're all connected and, you know, we are essentially spiritual beings. But we... You know, in other words, a spiritual human being is everything. <coughs> a spiritual human being is everything. A spiritual human being is everything. So, so a spiritual human being is the centre of everything. So a spiritual human being is everything. So that means all possibilities, no limitations. So we can, we can fall into the dark, dead We can fall into the dark, dead, artificial matrix quite easily, slip into it and be drawn into it out of necessity, out of the reality that, that most around is that. So finding another real life is very hard to where you aren't dragged under, you know, like we are, like I am. Um, uh, let's see. <coughs> um, I just need to get a drink here. Um, um, oh, oh, damn! But sorry about that. The straws broke. Straw broke in the can. Uh, I just need a cold drink because my I'm coughing too much. I think you know. Uh. I haven't got a straw now, so I'll have to pour it. Oh dear, I'll pour it into the cup. Sorry about this. I'm so sorry, but I just, <coughs> I just can't stop coughing. Mm. Mm. I think that was because, see, they cough a lot around me on the street, and they've been doing it for years now. You know, they try to, because human beings are the centre and the receivers of everything as well as what they put out, if they can put the negative energy onto you, the negative ideas, the negative thoughts, the negative feelings, the negative images, see, you know, like if everyone coughs around you, they can almost bring you down because a human being is meant to be in a natural, more pleasant environment, you see. I'm not meant to be taking in all these negative um, energies around me. <clears throat> See, if I was surrounded only by positive energies, in other words, real life, because even real life, even though we have the potential for everything, all and everything, um, you know, we also do have some <clears throat> negative um, possibilities. But we're not 100% in the dark like the dark, dead, artificial matrix control ones. You know, they operate and believe in the artificial matrix God entity. You know, put whatever name you like on this one. You know, it's a very powerful being. Very powerful being. Controls the whole reality. 
and is allowed to um, do that because while human beings, um, like myself, allow yourself to be dragged into negative feelings and emotions or can't elevate yourself into full um, high vibration and frequency and also knowingness, I would think, knowing what is correct, what you're meant to do, always like myself, always slipping and making wrong decisions, always letting the matrix environment and influence overtake your natural instinct to do better or to just do um, what you would really even want to do in a way because what you what is a benefit to you really should be what you want to do. The matrix tricks us to where we most of the time are doing what we don't want to do and therefore it's not even a benefit to us and it certainly isn't a benefit to anyone or anything else and it certainly keeps this dark, dead matrix of low, low, dark, energy, low frequency, low vibration, negative feeling, negative emotion, beings, it keeps what they want going because they feed off and they need and their survival depends on real life's negative um angry, um, sad, um, depressed, um, aggressive, confused energy. They have to keep me and my kind in that state of being. And that is like fuel for them. That is their fuel. That is what keeps them going. Otherwise, you know, they're already dead and dark by comparison with real life. But because, but it still keeps them breathing. They probably would, fight, they would just almost disintegrate without um, receiving life from real life because the dead can only live through extracting life from real life. Real life is real life human beings that are the life force and the center of all. Don't know if that made sense. Um, now, what happened to my, hold on, the cat's still out there. Cat is still out there. Um, Oh. oh, this is not a very good video. I bungled it up. It's actually getting cold out there. I'll have to bring him in. I'm not sure what to do with the cat because, you see, because I'm, I'm actually, see, the artificial dark dead spirits are paranoid about real life and about real human beings but right at this moment i'm paranoid because i'm even in a double mind i'm always in a double mind see at the moment like i'm in a double mind should i try to take the cat down to the vet but i've always been skeptical and of course paranoid about the medical um, systems of the matrix um, because as you know from my other older videos, I tended to think that the original um, big boy cat was replaced um, after a visit to, um, you know, the local vet, only because that was when I thought that there were slight physical changes. And I was wondering when possession had taken place or when the animal had been um, changed. 
And, um, you know, so therefore, since then, I was very sceptical, as I have been about medical and whatever. But sometimes it's a catch-22, because sometimes the matrix brings you down to where you need things. You need particular services. But whether those services will um, be a real benefit to you or not, or whether they will be used as a means of... um, Limiting you more is another question, and I have become very paranoid and sceptical about this in um, in recent years. When I say recent years, I mean like, you know, four or five years. And um, what am I going to do now? What will I show? Um, let's see. Um, oh. Um, I've got the, uh, okay, um, oh. I just don't have the energy for filming those videos again after yesterday because I feel that copyright could um, come into and I get mesmerised when I'm going across them. I don't know which ones to click on to. Um, I don't. But, um, see, because I haven't planned on making this video, I was just going to film the outside, but now I've got completely bamboozled. You know, confused. I'll, I'll be all right in a bit, but... Um, um, I got tricked. I just got tricked. I actually got tricked, to be honest. I have to say that I got tricked again. I'm always getting tricked, no matter how much I think I can um, keep on top of the matrix. And um, uh, we're just going to show this. Um, uh, let's see. T H E. Oh, the. Oh, as you can see, I'm a bit slow. I never knew how to type or anything, so basically, even with computers or even the TV, I'm probably the slowest in um, Australia or something, I would imagine. But I get there, but very, very... Oh, I don't. There we go. Okay. Slowly. And you do wonder if you, by the time you get there, the water holes dry type of thing or something, I don't know. Uh, uh, see, I was going, this is actually a favourite movie of mine. This is actually a favourite movie of mine, a very old movie. Um, I don't know why I'm going to mention this, but it, they used to have a copy on YouTube. I actually saw it a couple of months ago, but I had seen it many, many times, like 30, even 40 years ago, when I used to watch it about 40 years ago when they used to have all these old movies on at 1 or 2 in the morning on Sydney TV. <coughs> they don't have that now, but it used to be um, called The Golden Years of Hollywood and this fella used to come and show all these old um, movies from the 40s only because the golden years of Hollywood was what was classed as the 1940s of the film industry. And this was when I first saw this movie. This movie here. And as you can see, it is made in 1940. Will it come out? That My video picture seems to be a bit blurry there. Is it coming out? That was made in 1940, this movie. It is called... um, It's called... The Ladder. But they don't have the whole movie now. They took it off straight after I saw it a few months ago. But I didn't think to use it for a video then, of course. No, I didn't think to use it for a video then. Um... 
But I think it's probably it may not be in English. See, I've yeah, it's not in English. I don't think it's gonna be in English. I just have to see because maybe I can show bits of it, but the only thing is it's a two hour movie, so I can't really do that for a video. I'd have to know which spots to pick. Because I was up for copyright when I filmed just that tiny confession scene, the confession scene at the end of the movie. I call that the confession scene. That's when, um, you know, after everything's transpired naturally over the whole movie and um, the main character um, in it, played by Betty Davis, one of the most um, prominent uh, actresses of the 40s at and, and um, you know, regarded as a very good actress. Uh, let me see. Is this... Hold on, maybe this movie has got... Maybe... I wonder if I can show just that same scene, but it, as part of this movie, whether I can get round the copyright. I don't know. Because if you show clips when they've just got them, they might consider that copyright. So I don't know. But this, no, this is actually the whole movie. They got the whole movie. I didn't know that. I didn't check that. Because um, it doesn't matter. It does matter. But I just have to turn it up and see if... Well, let me see what I can do here. I have to get the thing up. I'm going to have to get the thing up. I don't know what I'm doing here. Sorry, just I'll just just give me a second. Oh, I'm messing it up, messing it up. Sorry. Oh, the ad. Hold on. Oh, what am I doing here? Oh, I'll just see what I can do here. See what I. Can do here. Oh, I think what I should do is um, have a look at this movie. Hold on. Let's see. On my own and then pick out bits and then make. See, she's killing. See? See, she's just killed the man she loves in that scene. But it's not her husband. She's very happily married to um, to um, her husband in the sense that he thinks that they have the perfect marriage. He is very happy with her. He thinks she is the most devoted, wonderful wife. He loves her um, very much, which is shown in this movie because he still loves her at the end when he finally realises that, yes, she has killed someone, a man she really loves, in cold blood, because he basically didn't love her. He did have a um, uh, an affair with her, you could say. Is that the right word? You know, she was married and he knew it, but he was single and he, because she liked him, he had an affair with her on the side. But <coughs> at some point, he fell in love with this strange Asian lady, only strange because Betty Davis is English and was horrified that he would fall in love with someone so different to her, you see. And... Um, now, this is a foreign film, I think. Yeah, this is sub it's got subtitles there, so maybe this movie is not going to be in English. I'll just check it. I hope I'll get round it. Hold on.
No, I'm in luck. That is actually an English version of this movie. Now, I didn't know that. If I'd known that yesterday, I could have perhaps, um, yeah, because it looked different with the, it looked as though it was foreign, because sometimes they have the American movies um, dubbed in foreign language for foreign ones, and I thought they took that copy off, but they haven't. Ah, that is actually quite good. But the only thing is I'm all bungled up because I haven't watched it. I need to watch it again. I can I could watch this movie over and over again. I have probably seen it. I've probably seen it. Um, well, see, I saw it. I watched it. A, I think I watched it twice a few months ago when it was on. And, of course, over my lifetime, since I was like about, 20 odd and I'm now 65 I've seen it quite a few times but I hadn't seen it for years because they didn't have it on the TV for years but I used to see it when I was quite young many a time because they used to show it a lot um, but I remember it very well even if I had only seen this movie once or twice I would remember it very well I would remember I would particularly remember some scenes because um, even low I shouldn't relate to them because I haven't experienced um, any of this. I relate to it more like I do to the Matrix demigods and to the Matrix people around. I see their personalities and their character as something um, not so much different to mine but in the other extreme. Like I say, human beings can experience everything and anything. But the others tend to have a cold, negative mindset because they are artificial android beings, you see. They don't, um, they only simulate and um, pretend and act out real positive human emotions because they don't thrive on those. So naturally their game is to play out being a positive real life human being whilst covertly or secretly, secretly trying to extract negative energy from a human, <coughs> human being. I'm so sorry. <coughs> Hold on. I have to get another drink. See, they put that cough onto me. I think that come from quite close. Because I wasn't coughing till, you know, I'm aware of this. On the street when they do it, they can't pass it on to me. They used to be able to uh, about a oh, year, year, year and a half ago, quite easily. But if you become... <coughs> more aware of things, which is what you should be. And if you were in positive company or in with your own kind, you would be a lot more oblivious to this artificial matrix and its negative dark energy beings that are surrounding you in order to pass off their negative energy onto you. So then they get the real life negative energy, which is life for them. I don't think... <coughs> explained that very well so sorry oh okay that was a drink but it was also an energy drink which I don't like to touch them very often I normally just stick with tea and coffee but uh you know I'm not going to stop and make a cup of tea or something or, or whatever <coughs> and um Everything in moderation, as they say. I guess that's the secret, isn't it, really? You know, like if you can do things in moderation, um, not so bad. I'm going to try here. It's nearly dark, actually. I better bring the cat in, too. I'll just finish off this thing if I can. If I can. I don't know if I can. This is actually the movie. I recommend that... It's on the YouTube. They've got a copy on the YouTube, but it's called a... This is... It's, but it's like this. Wait on. It's... um. See, it's that there. 
so you might have to go on to that remember how I showed that color picture because all the others are black and white because it's a black and white movie as you can see it's a black and white movie it's um you know but they you know I I don't I like black and white movies um that's like the um film film noir because to me that makes them a bit more mystical and I'm aware that I'm watching a film you know because I I Although you get drawn into the fantasy, and let's face it, this whole reality is a fantasy. People are a fantasy. Because if the people you're dealing with are not real and not on the level, and you don't know what they really are, you don't know what their true feelings and their true thoughts are towards you, you are dealing with a fantasy sometimes even bigger than when you watch a movie. Because at least I can take or leave a movie. And those characters in the movie influence me while I'm watching them but if it's but they're not in my personal life so they can't um you know like I say they can't you know in some respects they have influence the demigods have influence that's like what you see on your screen because you don't know most of the people that make movies or that make videos and stuff but the people that are in your personal space, that come into your personal space, you are dealing with just as much a fantasy as if you're watching an actor on the screen. There's no difference. They're acting out everything they say and do to you. None of them are going to come up to you and say, hey, I'm an artificial, negative, dead, dark spirit being that's here to bring you down in any and every way we can. You know, they're going to be like the demigods where they pretend, they play, they act, and you believe in them, and you enter into their fantasy reality, which is essentially a matrix control reality, unfortunately for us. And that makes up so many people because they are like a, a whole denomination of people. They've infiltrated every field, every um, every sector of the world. You know, because it's an end game situation. There's very few real people left by comparison in numbers. But, you know, because they need and prefer real life human negative energy, you know, <coughs> they, um, they converge around real life either secretly or openly depending on how they see your perception of the reality. Like the minute your perception of the reality becomes more clear, like-minded, then they converge more openly. Even though they know that to an outsider, to even one of your own kind, it is not that open. Because if you've got, if you've got vehicles that are really like army tanks, but they're camouflaged as buses and garbage trucks and um, semi-trailers and just your average car and your average motorbike. Despite the reality that even I would say that if those same vehicles made the same noise that they make around me daily, people would notice that the noise level was louder. But because they only turn up the noise on the vehicles when they come past me and then stop it when they're a block or two further along, that's how it works, and I know this for, for to be so. The average person or someone even of your own kind, unless they are aware of the matrix, they would probably think that I was slightly paranoid, you see. So this is the danger. So you can't tell. You can, Even if you did, uh, you know, theoretically speaking, and this is actually true too, because I don't really encounter that many real people. But if I did, 
unless they are at a very high spiritual level or a very high aware matrix level. Actually, the two are connected anyway. There really isn't any difference. But because if you have either of those things, you can at least put forward the plausibility of this end time scenario and this um, anti-life program being played out against real life. You see, you could do that. <coughs> you could you could do that. But um, but proving it at a physical level would still be hard. If you know, like how far they would believe it, what's going on against real people? Because, like I say, if the sound level, even of buses and trucks and even cars, it's a bit like if a car only bibs at horn or throws eggs at you when it's going past, but doesn't do it to anyone else, you know, so no one else sees it or hears it and they think the reality is pretty normal, it's a bit hard to um, prove it. That's, that's, that's what I realise, because it's a known thing, as I've mentioned before, and, and they'll even tell you this, that the traffic is a lot thicker just at the top of the streets where I go. Much thicker, but thin everywhere else. And, of course, some people will just say, well, there's probably a reason for that. But what is the real reason for it? That's the thing. The real reason is always, is a secret. <coughs> is a secret. Oh, I'm so sorry about coughing. See, I think I picked that. I don't know. I think that only happened when I went outside. I was not coughing before I turned this video on and went outside that door. So that's an interesting, it's not an interesting thing, but I'm not going to elaborate on it. <coughs> but... But it's spoiling the video, especially as I've got it really close so that I sound clear and okay like I did yesterday but had to delete the video for the copyright reasons because I filmed, you know, a couple of whole music videos, too much of them, you see, and, that, and so it wasn't allowed. I must be careful of that because I'll end up um, causing myself more problems, I think. Oh, I'm just... Oh, I should really do this movie, but see, I can't pick the right spots because I have, I didn't, see, if I'd have watched this movie just before I did it, but it's very hard to pick spots of movies. Um, but essentially in this movie, um, like I say, this, um, the main character played by Betty Davis is supposedly happily married to this man and he has, his best friend is a lawyer um, let's see if I, there is a scene where um, maybe I've got the right scene here I don't know I hope I have there's just a couple of good scenes which you'll have to really really I recommend watching this movie I would recommend watching this movie even if there was no Matrix it's just a to me it's an excellent old movie and always been a bit of a favourite of mine I was very pleased when I was able to find it on the YouTube because um, I hadn't seen it for a bit. But I thought they took it off when I went to... Wait on, hold on. I have got the right scene here, I think. Oh, I should be good at this because I know this movie very well. Very well indeed. But I've got to be careful of copyright because I don't even know if I'm allowed to do this, to be honest. Oh, wait on. This, this, and don't forget the movie is called The Letter because the letter is the thing that incriminates her. She wrote this love letter, you could say, to this man that she was having the affair with, that she was madly in love with the night that she killed him, just before, and, and, and not only begged him to come and see her because she had found out that he had married this strange Asian lady and that he had fell in love with someone besides her and that he wanted to leave her. He didn't want to see her anymore because he had married someone else. She, of course, was married to, supposedly happily married to her husband, but it was a one-sided love. She didn't dislike her husband. She liked him a lot. He, In fact, she mar when she married him, she liked him a lot because he, he loved her so much that he gave her everything. 
She had every comfort and she had a contented life. But that was before she got infatuated and obsessed with this young man that she basically fell in love with. And when he told her that he couldn't see her ever again because he had fell in love and married this strange Asian lady, um, it's like the Matrix ones or a certain mindset, that the psychopathic mindset. If I can't have you, no one else will. And basically she shot him in cold blood and killed him when he said, it's over, goodbye. She wouldn't let him leave. She actually said that. She said, I thought I'd never see him again, so I killed him. Now that's... Um, Okay, I might be able to show this here. I don't know. I'll just put it on pause there. This is where she is now being arrested for the murder of this man. Because she killed him in cold blood. And, you know, everyone heard the gunshot. And her husband, she told her husband that she shot him in self-defence because he basic, she didn't know him, which, of course, she knew him very well. She was having an affair with him for quite a long time on the side. And he was just a friendly, happy-go-lucky fella, at least as the movie goes, because someone said at some point, um, if this fella actually tried to attack, you know, your wife, what sort of fella was he? And and um, and those that knew him said, well, it's because that because they made out that he was intoxicated or something when he did it. Because basically, everyone said he was a very likable fellow. In fact, they said no one could dislike him. He was so personable, and that's why she probably liked him. But she fell in love with him, um, you know. But the pretense that she put forward in her defence for killing him in order to get off um, a murder charge, basically, was he, I didn't know him, but I only knew him like as an acquaintance of my husband, but I never really ever um, spoke to him privately much or anything, which was completely untrue. Um, and um, she said that she invited him to that house that night um, to buy um, a gun or something for her husband and because she knew he understood that as a secret present, you see. so she, and But then she said that he turned on her and tried to attack her. And that was the um, defence that was put up in the court case when she was arrested for murder because they had to because um, even though everyone believed her to be innocent, she still had to go through the court case and prove her innocence, you know, because from a legal standpoint, there was no doubt that she picked up a gun and fired it and killed um, this man. <coughs> and her lawyer is the best friend of her husband. And he finds out about the letter that she wrote to him telling him to come. But see, in the letter that she wrote telling him to come there to, that night, she doesn't say, um, could you come here because I need some information about buying a gun for my husband's birthday present. No, she sh clearly shows in that letter demanding him to come frantic that I, you know, you, I can't answer for the consequences if you don't come. In fact, it clearly showed that she was um, in love with him and that there was a personal relationship between them, which means that there's a motive for murder. That's right, a big motive for murder. So that letter was incriminating. That's why the movie is called The Letter because it's all based around the letter because if only she can get rid of that letter which is in the hands of the strange Asian lady that he has married, that he loved, that she killed. She has got the letter and she is going to sell it to Betty Davis for a high price in order to get her off. But, of course, that's not how it's going to play out in the movie because this strange Asian lady, unlike Betty Davis and her relationship with her husband, it wasn't a one-sided love affair at all. The man she killed loved the Asian lady 
100% and the Asian lady loved him 100%. Unlike Betty Davis's relationship with her husband where her husband loves her 100% and will do anything for her. But she only loves being married to him because um, he loves her, but she does not love him, not the way that she loved this man that she shot. And that's the story. But I'm going to say here, in this scene here, this is a very good scene. I hope I can show it without copyright, otherwise I'm wasting all this time making another video. So I only have to show a little bit. But in this scene here, her husband's best friend is a number one lawyer. See, there he is standing and there's Betty Davis. She's been, she's waiting for trial here. So this is like in the um, jail, actually. But, but of course, they're treating her like a princess in jail because even the um, lady wardens and things all believe she's innocent. And they're like, oh, it's terrible that you should have to be in jail while you're waiting for the trial because she has to stay in jail for, I think, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a month or something. I don't know, but um, I forget now. But something like that. But anyway, not relevant. But I'm going to show. But the lawyer has come to her, and he has read the letter, and he's going, and he's being, and the letter is being offered to him for sale, for a very large amount of money. In fact, basically, they want every cent that's in her husband's bank account. And they've got to get it out of his banking account, take the husband's money, without the husband finding out, preferably, that she has that this letter incriminates her because this lawyer friend is trying to protect her husband because it's his best friend. And as she says, I think I might be able to play this scene, but I've got to be careful of copyright. Here we go. I'll turn it up. I better turn it up. Wait on, turn it up. Oh, I can't turn it. It's not a hand on that, is it? Who's got the letter? And his wife? Oh. Okay. Okay, I'll just wind it back again because I think she said something interesting. She's just been too brave, poor little thing. And not eating enough, like as not. I feel fine now. See how they're all Go sympathetic towards just, her and like her and think that she's way. innocent and that she's a really way. wonderful <laughs> wife and <laughs> woman? Okay. I'm afraid I've made rather a mess of things. I'm sorry. Well, that was not for me. You distrusted me from the beginning. It's not a hand over there, is it? Watch your hand. Who's Watch your hand. Letter? Watch your hand. Wife? Watch your hand on the side of the wall. Oh. Are you going to let him hang me? What do you mean by that, Leslie? You could get the letter. Do you think it's so easy to do away with unwelcome evidence? Surely nothing would have been said to me if the owner weren't quite prepared to sell it. That's true. But I'm not prepared to buy it. But it wouldn't be your money. Not what to say. I wasn't thinking of the money. I don't know if you'll understand this, but I've always looked on myself as an honest man. You're asking me to do something which is no better than suborning a witness. Do you mean to say you could save me and you won't? What harm have I done you? How could you be so cruel? Cruel? You must be insane, Leslie. Must be Boy, insane, <laughs> yes. To himself. That's a good line because it's so true. These people are insane. I can't do what you ask. Now she's going to play him. Watch. Never had anyone in his life. He's so good and simple and kind, and he trusts me so. I mean everything, everything in the world to him. This will ruin his life. 
Oh, I know what you're thinking. You despise me. You think Bob will rid of me if they do hang me. I don't despise you. It isn't important what I feel about you, do you understand? I'm going to do what I can. She's got him. <laughs> See, she's just convinced him. She's just convinced him to sacri or to risk his whole career, a top lawyer, to suppress this letter. Won't have to show Bob the letter. He'll be an important witness. We should be as firmly convinced of your innocence as he is now. After the trial. I'm going to try and save your life. He loses his trust in you. He loses everything. Great line. It's strange that a man can live with a woman for ten years and not know the first thing about her. I think that is a wonderful line. I've always thought that. Even for forty years, I thought that was a fantastic line. Where, and that is like the Matrix control, artificial psychopathic people. How he says, strange that a man can live with a woman for. 10 years and not really know it all. I've always thought that was a, a fantastic line because it was, you know, how could you seriously live with someone for 10 years and that person trust you completely, adore you? Her husband adores her. Think she is the perfect woman, the perfect wife, and he doesn't know her at all. He has no idea that she has killed a man that she loves much more than him in cold blood because she refuses to let him go and live a life with the woman that he has not only chosen but married. You know, in other words, the relationship they had whether you think it's a right or a wrong relationship on both sides, is over because he has fell in love and married someone else. And she's like, well, even though I'm married and having the affair with you, you are not going to leave me and love someone else and not see me ever again. Even though she was already married before him. You know, I think that's I think that comes down to the pot calling the kettle black or or um having your cake and eating it too or something like that, doesn't it, you know? But anyway, um what does happen in this movie and I'm doing a movie review here by the way, everyone. But actually I <laughs> it's funny that I would actually um if I was in a real reality I could talk about movies to anyone for a long time, but be, and I'm not really supposed to be doing movie reviews in these videos. I'm just using them all. Oh, sorry, I didn't know what I was doing there. Just using them all, um, you know, um, as an example. Oh, maybe I'll show this scene here because it is a very good scene. This is where she has to get the. Le I hope I'm not breaching copyright, but this is where. Um, Leslie, she's called in the movie, but that's played by the um, great 1940s actress Betty Davis. Um, when I say great, because she was regarded as one of the probably, in fact, the person that used to um, show her movies back when I was like young in my 20s on late night TV, the, the man who presented the golden years of Hollywood, um, he, was an, he was a Sydney man. So it was a local thing, even though um, it went all over Australia on the TV late of the night. Um, he um, did openly say that Betty Davis was not only his favourite actress but the best actress ever. 
and um, I think he met her once and he basically just fell all over her even though she was really old and you know in her you know in her like at, uh, very old at that time you know like wasn't um, you know like um, yeah but um, I, he, I remember him rambling on about it so it was the greatest experience of his life you know but of course that's because even even whether the actual presenters are part of the matrix and then they um, they like their other matrix demigods or whether you have a real person that is allowed to operate in some profession and is falling all over the artificial demigods, you know, the actresses, the actors, um, who knows? Because um, I just, I assume that almost everyone and anything that is on the screen, whether it be in any form or on the computer, by and large, they are what you would call different levels of the demigods. Some are more well-known than others. Some are worldwide um, uh, demigods. In other words, worldwide um, famous, you know, that sort of thing. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, darling, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can get this... Um, Oh, okay, this is a great scene. This is a great scene. She's waiting. She's never met the wife of of um of the man she killed, but here she is coming in. This is a great scene. Look, here she is coming in for the first time. Betty Davis. Is she really going to give Betty Davis that letter? Do you think? Is she going to let her be free and go back to her husband and pretend she hasn't killed her husband that she loves? Do you think she is? She's going to give her the letter, but will that pan out that way? I don't think so. She's Look. Bonnie Marie and Chambers. Ask her if she has the letter. They got from some nation, Well, where is it? What's she waiting for? She's going to give the lady the money. Total contempt and hatred there in those eyes for Betty Davis. Can you not see it?
it's not going to pan out. She's got the letter. She's paid for it. His widow, because she's now his widow, the man that she's killed, may have let her have that letter, but it's not over, shall we say. Um, that's how the movie goes. As you can see, I'm getting, I'm getting um, engrossed in it, strangely enough. Um, but at any rate, um, we have the court case here. Where, um, see, there's the court case, and she is going to be acquitted of all charges, found completely non guilty of killing in cold blood that um, man that she loves. Because, you know, on the grounds of self defense, they believed her story, and there's the lawyer, he's wondering what he's done, but he's got her off. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna pan out, of course, because it's a movie, but, um, but he's got her off, so her husband should be really happy now. Because don't forget, it's cost. Even though he doesn't, he knows that he doesn't know that it's cost him every cent he's got. He doesn't know that in paying for the letter, because the lawyer has is trying. The whole purpose of why his best friend, the lawyer, has got Betty Davis off is so that, um, as you could see in the thing, so that his best friend the man that she's married to, won't find out that, you know, he's married to, you know, a woman that basically doesn't love him, you know, because as she, in her own words she said it will destroy Robert and he wants to save his friend. So he's committed, um, uh, what's that word, you know, where you suppress evidence um, in order to get her off. You know, they've bought that letter. But it's cost him every cent he's got, and he doesn't know that. But when he finds out that it's cost him so much, he wants to know what was in the letter, and this is what happens at the end. They eventually have to show him the letter, and that's when he realises that that um, his wife, Betty Davis, was in love with another man and shot the man that she loved to prevent him from leaving her and going with someone else. You know, the old saying, um, these people have the attitude, if I can't have you, no one else will, and that was her attitude. She couldn't help it. Um, but the final scene, I think I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to show this, the final scene just before the end of the movie when the husband now knows that Betty Davis loved this man that she shot and there was no self-defence or anything like that, but but she's free. And the line at the end when she's like, oh, could we start again? Can you forgive me? And his words are, if you love someone, you can forgive them anything. And she's like so relieved and so grateful like, oh, I haven't lost everything after all. But there's only one thing he wants to know, though, you know, because he wants, he doesn't, he wants to start again. But, of course, he's been in delusion for the whole time, for 10 years, but he's still hoping and he doesn't want to let go of his illusion. So he's hoping that, I'll just show this scene, it's such a good, oh, wait a uh, I think I've got the wrong, I think I've got the wrong scene here. No, I've got the right scene, but i just got to wait for it to come. I've got the, oh, no, this is no good, okay. But her husband's basically lost everything because of her killing that man and the court case has cost him every cent he's got, you could say. So he had a dream of um, selling that place and getting another place and moving into a completely different life with her and taking his wife with him. Now that dream is squashed. They have to stay where they are. But, um, you know, cause, because when she... Um, asked the price for the letter, she obviously 
knew how much they had and basically wanted to take them for everything, which they did. But now he knows that at least he's got his wife back, but it's cost him everything. But he needs to find out one more thing because he wants to start again. Wants to <coughs> start again. And um, I think I've got the right scene, but I'm not sure. So this is just the end of it now where are they going to start again and are they going to pretend that nothing happened and of course he wants to because he naturally still loves her even after finding out the truth, shall we say. Which is um, interesting with nothing else, I would think. Um, but I have to find the right part here. I won't play the part where, see, this is where he actually says, um, where she's asking, where she's packing, and they're going to, you know, start again and she's pretending as though nothing's wrong and um, then as you can see she's now like oh can we do it she's starting to like she's like um, Robert we can't go on can we and he's like well I don't know but she's like can you forgive me and he's like I won't put the sound up because I don't want to um, breach copyright, but he's like, um, she's like, I've ruined your life, and um, but can we go on? Because, and he's like, well, when you love someone, you can forgive anything. And that's when we have the best scene of the movie. And I'm just going to turn it up. In a second. That's where he actually says it there. So he says, when you love someone, you can forgive anything. And she's so surprised, but also almost amazed. And she's so happy. So she's, ran to, so she's hugging him. She's like, oh, I'll try my best to love you. I'll try my best. We can do it. And here we are. Turn up the sound. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I love you. I love everything in my power to make you happy. That's not enough. Less. Leslie, tell me. Now, this minute, do you love me? It's all over. It's all over. <laughs> uh, and soon after, I suppose I shouldn't tell you the end. Obviously, it's over. No, she can't love him. You know. Um. <coughs> but... The man that she killed, his wife, also isn't going to just leave it. So you have, uh, at any rate, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh. So in the end, she accepts um, that she actually can't live without the man. She's killed. Um, 
and I won't show the final scenes because I think I've already overstepped the copyright. But it's on the YouTube anyway, so it's worth seeing. And um, there it is. I'll actually show the... Um, show actually this is another very good movie too this is a very good movie too this one here 1940 also both those movies were made in 1940 very old but look that is a very good movie too that is the original gaslight that's what they do to us they gaslight us that's that's where that term comes from that original movie and it's on the YouTube if anyone wants to watch it there is another version too, but that's the original version. And 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 shows how um, the Matrix artificial android ones, the same as like the demigod actors that are that are acting out the gaslight in this movie, um, how they gaslight that term is gaslighting us, confusing us, tricking us in the matrix, making us paranoid, making us... Because in that movie, the main fella essentially is married to this woman for his money and he gaslights her into thinking she's um, insane because he... You know, that's what they do with their language, with their... Um, with trickery... Uh, making you doubt your reality. That's what the gaslight term means. They do it deliberately so that they have control over you. And he did it to his wife in that original movie in order to um, have her committed into a mental place, I think, so that then he basically got all her money because he didn't really like her or her company. He just liked... Um, her money and the life she could give him. So, you know, so that that's that's in that Gaslight movie, which is there on the thing, which just come up now, but I didn't see that. So I just thought I'd mention it because it really is... Um, <clears throat> um, I think I showed that original uh, letter thing where you can latch onto it. There it is. See, th this is actually it here. So if you want to watch it, See, I'm doing a movie review now, everybody. I've got I've temporarily become, uh, just for a few minutes, a normal person to where I'm like, hey, I'm doing a movie review and I'm a normal person. I'm just saying, hey, this is a very, a very good old movie that is worth watching. Even though I probably spoiled it by showing so many of the best scenes of it. But I couldn't. Uh, so I think I better fold up here now. And it is dark. That's the last bit of light. It is now dark. So I'm folding up. I can't show anything more. And I don't think I... The sound was already outside. All the construction that's going on outside, unfortunately, had stopped to where I can't show the sound level on the mobile because essentially I wanted to show with all this sound that it is a negative human suppression frequency that is operating around the houses and in the suburbs of real people in order to suppress them at a psychological um, level through sound because any artificial, mechanical, negative sound, or even just um, excessive banging, or even if you have continual noise and you're aware that it's even a patrol system, all these things create a gaslighting effect like that movie to where it's not that you doubt your reality, but you basically can't live in it. It's, it's, it's a suppression tactic. And it... Um, it makes life very unpleasant and uncomfortable, to say the least, because if you're always got loud noises coming into your house, you know, it doesn't matter whether the construction... It wouldn't even matter if it was a real reality and the construction was legitimate, because theoretically speaking, you could have the odd work going on. But when it is going on day after day, month after month, year after year... Um, it goes beyond belief, and this is this is the only difference. 
But if you mention individual incidences, even if they happen daily, most people will not see that as that unusual. They might say, oh, well, yes, it's annoying. But hey, it's a necessary work. You know, they'd say, well, you can't tell people not to renovate their house. You can't tell road work not to go on. You can't do anything about it. There's nothing illegal or about it. The Matrix is really a place where everything is done relatively legally on the surface, but hidden under that surface. If innocent traffic is really a patrol control system, as you can see, that's just one element of it. But if that is the case, and it is, then it is really um, against the rights, whether it be legal or not, of real people. It's like Betty Davis getting off in the letter. She didn't get off in the end, no. But she did get off on the murder charge when she clearly had cold-bloodedly killed a man just because he couldn't love her the same as she loved him. He wasn't obsessed with her. You know, her love was obsessive and negative because it's because like the Matrix ones, if they can't control you, they'll bring you down. I mean, it's unfortunate if you love someone and they don't return that love. It is unfortunate. But you can't say, well, look, they can't love anyone else and I'm going to bring them down if they choose to do that. And, of course, it was the cat pot calling the kettle black because she herself was married. She herself was married and yet she was like, you can't marry, you know, like, like her husband loved her and she didn't love him. But she loved the other man who didn't love her but fell in love and loved someone else. You know, it's, it's just how things happen. A normal human being would find that sad and distressing for a while, but they would move on, get over it eventually and accept it and let it go. Because what is the point in loving someone that doesn't love you? You're never going to make someone love you. See, that, see, she was out of touch. She was in basically insane, as he even says that, the lawyer even says that to her in the movie, are you insane? She, she wasn't insane if you really looked at her. In fact, it looked, she looked like the most composed, elegant, intelligent, um, you know, perfect woman almost. But in reality, she was out of touch because she also had the control issue. She also needed to have what did not want her. She had to have that control. She was very much like the artificial ones in the mindset. Really, um, a tendency, perhaps even more than a tendency, towards a psychopathic mindset. Even though that really isn't emphasised so much in the movie, you could see it as just anger and over, you know, a crime. You, most people would say that was a crime of what they call a crime of passion because of, of what we call unrequited love. You know, that means where the love is not returned. Obviously, the fact that um, she had this liaison with this man, obviously he did return something to her. He liked her. He probably enjoyed the fling. He enjoyed the affair. But he didn't love her deeply enough to marry her, you know, 
Not that he could have anyway, because she was married. See, so really, if you think of it, a very much a um, what's the word? What's that saying? Um, a um, I can't think of it, but it's you know like it. Most people would say, well, look, if she, if if, if supposing he had wanted, supposing he had actually loved her, right? Put it now, which wasn't the case. He didn't love her a hundred percent. He married someone else. But if he had loved her, say. Boy, am I taking this movie serious, I have to admit. I always did, but now I'm taking it even more serious because I just found it a fascinating, enthralling movie when I've watched it, you know. But but then again, past is present and past is now, you see. That's what I now realise. I realise it, but I don't realise it, but it is so. If he had loved her and she had loved him, she did love him, would she have left her husband to marry him? Because that's what she really should have been offering or wanting anyway. That actually doesn't come out in the movie, but you kind of get the impression that she wanted to stay married to her husband because he was, you know, provided her with a lot of comfort and all the rest of it, but she just wanted to keep have a cake and eat, eat it too and have the liaison and the affair on the side with the other man. In other words, it's a bit like when a man, I suppose, has a mistress, isn't it? That was Except that in this case it was the role reversed round. You know, I don't know much about that, but I would think some people could be in those types of relationships for years, you know, where they're married but they have a mistress that they see all the time and is just as devoted to them as the one they're married to. I'm not sure how people pull all these scenarios off, but it happens quite frequently, I believe. It's certainly um, talked about, so um, that's interesting. But there we go. I better fold up. Um, better fold up this video. Stop this video right now. It's very hard for me to press the stop knob sometimes. Because I get, um, I do get carried away with myself even sometimes, and I don't think that's a good thing. But then again, um, it's a plane going over, and will I get the last plane, go out there in the dark and get the last plane? Well, it's not the last plane, there'll be quite a few still going. The planes go to are quite late. But um, I may not bother, I may just fold up. I better, oh, it's getting cold. It's dark now. Yes, no more mechanical work now anyway. Um, so it should be... What's this car? See, that's a patrol car there. Just pull right up in front of me. You won't see that, but there it is. Look, just there. This car does not belong in the street, and yet it's parked right in front. See there? That's a patrol car. See, the fellow will get out. It's, oh, well, actually, it's not even that, but it's... um. See, they're getting out and pretending to go... What are they doing? Not going in there. See, she's just going to fiddle around with the car. Just um, proving a minor point, but um, I'm folding up now anyway. Okay. Folding up now. I must press that knob on the... Please um, uh, leave the video now because I'm just having trouble pressing the off knob because um, because of my silly... Um, obsessional neurosis I can't find something to press the knob with on my mobile so just leave the video right now because I'm wasting your time